Hello everyone, um, welcome to this review of the very much anticipated and loved um, Hobby King Graphene battery. So I wanted to make kind of a scientific test because the flying tests are, are difficult to get a, really a feel. I mean I've been flying them and they're much more snappy and responsive and I feel I'm flying a much faster and I can do more tricks and wait for longer to pull out of dives and such things. But Generally, it's it's good to try and get a feel for how much they sag, how long they last, and how warm they are. And then, now, after a flight, they're definitely a lot cooler than um, they than my other batteries, which are actually these the ones I usually fly are these these multi star ones. Now, if you look, they are rated forty to eighty C discharge, um, and they hold up nowhere near as well as the graphene, which are 65C but are apparently true 65C. So let me explain the setup here. I made a thrust uh, stand just out of some uh, extra bits I had lying about. Here's a, a, a 22, uh, what is it? It's a 2200 kV motor. It's only a 3S motor but that's okay. He'll, he'll last for the short pulse. Then I've got an, an uh, ZTW Spider 30 amp ESC, and I've got a a UBEC powering the little receiver, battery powering the receiver. I've got a multimeter. I don't have a current. I can't measure currents up to the current that this thing will draw. So, but that's not important because I will. I mean, it's kind of important, but it's all going to be a relative measurement. Then I've got the scale here as a crit thrust. It obviously changes. It's. It doesn't really matter that it's not accurate when it stops but I'll tear it before each time so I'll do that and now we get the same measurement each time then I've got a, a voltmeter here to see how much the battery sags um, I'm going to be comparing this guy which is the 1400 this is the 40 to 80 C and then obviously the nanotech which is apparently a true 65 C for us as well and then this beast here, which is for my Discovery Pro. Now look, this is a 70C 4 um, amp burst. So it, I mean 35C, sorry, 70C burst. This is a huge battery and will outlive any motor um, combination. So that's just going to be the reference to see how much this sags compared to the Nanotechs. So I'm going to run the test for a couple of seconds, maybe 10 seconds, and see how much they sag each time. And then you'll already see uh, the differences. So let's give that a try. Desire power, uh, setting the benchmark. This is a fully charged 4S battery, huge, huge battery. Shouldn't feel much current. I mean, it will feel the current draw, but not really nearly as much as those tiny mini quad batteries. So let's start with that. Let's go for 15 seconds with this guy here. So I'm just gonna put him here, plug him in. Right, 16.7 volts. Let's zero the scale. And let's go for 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Ready? Oh, transmit on. Good. There we go. Let's see how quickly it recovers. We had a thousand grams, I think, of thrust there. Okay, so next in line, let's do the um, the multi-star. These are the batteries that normally fly. They are rated at uh, 40 to 80 C discharge, which kind of means probably 40 C. Um, they get very warm when I fly, the Nanotechs do not um, so far. So they were charged, the Nanotech and the Multistar were charged in parallel, so there should be the same voltages. Let's see. Let's go. All right, let's 
zero that out. Let's do this. All right, good enough. 16.76 volts. All right, and go. <laughs> Okay, so I look at it recovering. So, one of the things I noticed is that the thrust was much lower than on the video with the large uh, 4S battery. That's because it just had more capacity to provide this one really <clears throat> didn't have the oomph. It's a tiny bit warm. Motor's warm, and the battery seems to have recovered. All right, let's try the nanotech next. Okay, let's do the nanotech now. Sixteen point seven seven, nearly identical to the previous battery. Let's just zero that out, and um, off we go. Okay, it's coming back up to voltage, much, much faster than the multi-star. Alright, seems to have settled. Um, one thing to remember, this is a 1400, this is the 1300. So the C rating is even more important for this one. This one is completely cool. Um, these, these are not old batteries. By the way, they're about the same old uh, age. Well, they're they're maybe a couple of weeks older than the nanotechs, but I haven't sorry than the uh, graphene. But I haven't flown them very much. I have a new batch. This is part of the new batch. So, all right, for the final test, I'm going to show you what a really really underrated battery. What happens to it when you really um, draw more out of it than it should supply? This is a an old Zippy. Compact Power 35C. Um, yeah, I I can't fly with these because as soon as you even give a little bit of throttle, they just stop beeping and, and they just sag and and die. So let's just see what happens with this guy. So 16.6, 16.76, and let's go. All right. All right, it's recovering. But as you saw, it dipped incredibly fast and the thrust wasn't nearly as high. And it's slightly warm. So is the motor, but good. Okay. Okay, so conclusion time. Uh, firstly, I've flown with these graphene um, about three times now, and they are way more punchy than the uh, Multistar Race spec battery. Um, they are 40 to 80C, I think they're 40C, I mean 80C is probably just the peak of course. So if you quickly work out um, how many amps they can actually deliver, then if you take this number here, 5.2 amps, times the C rating and you get the amount of amps, so that's 182 amps for the big guy. Um, if we do the multi-star, we go 40 times 1.4, 56. The graphene, 65 times 1.3, 84.5 amps. And this poor little 
the p is 1.3 times 35 times 45 amps. So, I mean, it, it's clear why why the performance differ as much as they do, but what's interesting is the recovery time um, between them and the fact that these don't actually get warm when you fly with them. Obviously, the big ones, if I use a bigger quad, then it also gets warm, but generally they don't need as much burst power as many quads do. Um, I think one of the big topics about these batteries is the fact that the C rating is often overrated, and I think that with these uh, graphene, they're actually being honest for a change. Uh, they also have a a, a um, piece of fiberglass on each side to protect them. That's why they're a little bit heavier and thicker. It's because they've added a piece of um, fiberglass protection to save them in crashes. So if we quickly look here, they all started out about equal. The big one was lowest at 16.7. Um, the lowest voltage it dropped to during the test was 15.96. Um, the thrust max was one kilogram, 1,009 grams. The minimum was 916 at its lowest voltage. The multi-star was um, started at 16.76. Uh, the minimum was 14.75. I mean, that's a huge drop, and I think that is an indicator of quality um, between, the, between the battery types and maybe the technology inside them. The maximum thrust was 923 grams, the minimum 842 at the lowest voltage. Then you get to the graphene, of course. It's 16.77 uh, to start. Um, it only dropped to 15.4. I mean, that's a huge difference between these two and not, you know, I mean, all right. There is an amp difference, but the fact is that the amount of voltage drop or sag between them is quite, um, is quite a lot. And then... You, we only ended up at 931 minimum thrust at the minimum voltage, of course. I mean, that's a direct coloration, uh, correlation, of course. And the Pearl Zippy, he dropped all the way to 13.9 volts. That's why light pearl alarms always go off when you have four motors pulling that much uh, current. Um, and then you have uh, it dropped to from 865 to 781 grams of thrust. Now, one more thing to note is that I have flown these graphene, the one pack which I flew on the first day was a rainy day and I decided to fly it and I only had the one charged and I flew and I was flying normally and I was still punching out and all of a sudden the quad fell out of the sky because the battery was completely flat, it couldn't even sustain flight anymore and that is I think one of the selling points about that, the power it doesn't sag throughout, it's, it's there and you have your punchiness and then all of a sudden you don't have any power left because you've used it all up. And that's with the normal packs, you kind of notice that while you're flying, uh, they're starting to sag and you come into land. With these guys, they have consistent power and um, and I would, I would I would recommend them. Pick them up and they'll probably only get cheaper. Obviously, you've seen my previous video, the box, they come in as a bit, it's a bit of a waste, uh, but I guess they're trying to hype it up a little bit and, and it's, it's worked. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, feel free to ans ask any questions and I will try to answer them in the comments. Okay, cheers, bye.